All right, for week 15, we're going to look at some Kirk Rosenwinkel um, chordal ideas. If you've never heard him, um, you need to. So it's kind of like, you know, if you don't have enough vitamin D in your diet, uh, you need to get vitamin D in your diet. If you've never heard Kirk Rosenwinkel, you need to get some Kirk Rosenwinkel in your diet. It's, anyway. <laughs> And with that being said, let's look at, uh, basically the first concept is uh, what's called a chord scale. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to look at a minor, how he approaches some minor chords and some minor movements um, in his chordal playing. So G major is the notes of A Dorian. We just play, we take G major notes, but we center them around A. Not going to get in the modes too much, but that's what it is. So if we take uh, our notes on in the key of G. All the notes we're going to play are going to be out of that. Everything we're looking at pretty much is diatonic. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, he plays non-diatonic uh, notes in his chordal playing but uh, you kind of learn to, you need to learn the notes that are proper, for lack of a better word, before you can learn that there are notes outside of that. Uh, gives you a frame of reference. Anyway, back to our scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a chord off of each of those notes. Uh, I'm not going to really go into what the chords are. You should do that on your own. I think uh, most of us, uh, just through would come out with say 90% of the exact same way of labeling these notes. There's a bunch of reasons for that. But then there's another 10% that is up to your interpretation, up to how you use it, and up to sort of your past, uh, the chordal knowledge you already have, just sort of how you think of harmony. And that's very personal. Um, so you need to develop that on your own. Anyway, back to the chords we're gonna build. So if we're gonna A, there's just your garden variety uh, A minor 7. We're going to think of everything, think of that as your starting point and your frame of reference. But we're going to start with the G, that um, flat 7th, and the first chord's just this. Now we're going to go up to the next note in our scale, which is A, the root. And we're going to play that garden variety one that all of us is seen eight million times it's easy because it's one finger slapped across the next is the ninth so you got an a minor nine chord uh that's one of those chords that all of us would kind of label the same it's played a lot it's just um it is what it is i use my pinky often you can use your third finger it kind of depends on what the the move is um you can play uh, prince songs if you want to use it as a dominant. Um, so yeah, so we got the first three notes up the scale. But we're playing chords. Now our next one's this. Nice. A minor seventh chord. Um, now, so we've gone up four. When we get to, well, we, really, when we get to the fourth here, we're going to play this movement. And uh, as a side note, this back to that sort of personally and how you see harmony and what you've learned in the past, I learned this movement thinking of this exact shape not as an A minor, but as a D dominant. And I learned it from Robin Ford because, you know, it's blue, he's bluesy and most, a lot of dominant stuff. But 
anyway, back to this. We're actually thinking that though, not over D, but over A. All of those notes are out of Dorian. Uh, another important concept here is that note, F sharp, is a natural six. And that is the most important note for Dorian. Because it distinguishes it makes it it distinguishes it from the other two minor modes. Both Phrygian A and Aeolian, instead of having this note in A, they have a flat six. Anyway, when you see, like if you're watching a Rick Beato uh, or whoever video and they call a chord a Dorian chord, it's because it's got a six. Just like uh, if they call a chord a Lydian chord, it's a major chord with a sharp four. So, we got that nice little movement there. And then we go to this, which is, which is really, uh, you are, everybody knows that chord shape. That's an A minor 7 with the root up on the 12th A string. But we're not, we've been doing all four note, four string uh, voicings. So we're going to take that one off and we can play the, the low uh, A there. And then the next movement is this. And once again, that's a Dorian chord because that note right there is our F sharp, which is our natural six. And then we're gonna go back to the next one is where we started, and then we'll kind of round it off with that A7, A minor seven. So if you notice, we, like I said, we just played a chord off of each of the notes uh, in the scale. And so what happens is when you wind up comping, and we'll see this when we get to a couple of the examples in a sec, um, you wind up playing little melodies. If you're doing chord melody, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. They'll, they'll harmonize the melody this way. You're really kind of thinking more like a piano player when you do this, uh, these kind of things. But so like if I took a melody, a simple, if that was mine, and we wanted it to be A minor, we would just play. See how I outline that melody with those. Um, and um, yeah, so there we go. So now, our first little um, chord movement that we're going to learn. I grabbed this from one of his songs. He may have even played a couple single notes in mixed in with this, but I just grabbed the chords. It's three of the voicings, um, but it's got one of those Dorian chords in it. And it was uh, where I grabbed this from, it was a short one measure. So he wanted to be able to say real quick, he didn't have a whole lot of time. It's not like he's playing over four measures, he's playing over one, and it was kind of a faster tempo. But he wants to outline, hey, this is a Dorian. So he did that by just playing these three um, voicings. Uh, and if you look at what that is, the very first one is a first inversion open triad of C major. And it's got your G note as the top note. Um, one thing about this little fragment is, in our chord scale that we just learned, all the notes were on the high E string. You could do, and should do, these with all the notes, the highest note on the B string. Those are the most common, uh, sometimes the G, but your most common are those, uh, those two strings. But here we go, so we got, so we got that shape, where we're skipping the string there, third finger, first finger, fourth. And then he played, you know, our garden variety, A minor seven, and then he goes to this, and that has the F sharp, so that's what I'm talking about, that Dorian chord, which he holds. So we got... Uh, and as a side note, if you... 
talking again like we did at the beginning about your past knowledge, your past history of chords, you might recognize that as one note, the root note, away from being a dominant ninth chord. So kind of something to explore, something to make some connections there. All right, so that was the first one. Uh, the second one is probably what I think is the hardest because I have trouble grabbing this last chord. I really need to practice it. But it goes like this. That last chord is tough for me. I still haven't worked on that. So we got... Um, so we got basically, you know... Guard variety, that one we learned before. Just learned this uh, open uh, voicing for first inversion major triad. And if you look, we're going up our melody notes are on the B string. Now we're gonna switch and our melody notes are gonna be on the high E string. So the next one's that. A lot of you will probably know that is a C major seven voicing. with the uh, major seven up on, uh, you know, as the highest note. But in this case, we're using it over an A, not a C, so it's a minor sound. And then he switches to this chord. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I always have trouble with getting up on this guitar anyway, that high D note to ring out. But one of the concepts to take away from this is he's using common tones, which is very important, and he's using two common notes. And that has a very, that's very strong. When you use one common note, which sometimes it works, uh, when you're using denser harmonies, if you can use two, it really unifies uh, your part, and it unifies your harmony. So if you look, he's got this, and then he's switching, he's gonna keep these two low notes, but you gotta refinger them. So you got that. So anyway, that's that one. Uh, the third one is... Same thing here, now he's kind of flipping that and he's doing the high notes, your melody notes, on the uh, top string. That's that uh, minor seventh that we had from our chord scale at the beginning. And then, instead of playing this minor nine voicing, which we had on our chord scale, he plays a full B minor. So it's very subtle difference, but it is a difference. Um, then he goes to our garden variety A minor seventh. Then he plays an a C triad once again, but this time it's voiced um, normally. <laughs> it's not a spread triad. Um, and then he plays just an A, instead of an A dominant, I mean an A minor seventh, he just plays an A minor. Part of the concept of that is, um, although like in our chord scale, we, we unified all those by having them all be the same um, four note, you know, it, so you can unify your parts by having them all, or a lot of them being four note voicings, or three note voicings, or two note voicings, um, so it really, like I said, that unifies it, but with this one, he is starting to play with that, and we've had our sort of fuller voicings. We've gone a little bit, we've just now gone to two just straight triads, which gives you another flavor. And how you mix these things is how you're going to come up with your own sound. All right, so the last one he does is this. But what he does is, that is a uh, A minor 
triad. These are all going to be triads. Uh, in this case, this one's a minor. If you know uh, that chord, you can put your pinky up there on the C. That's a A minor voicing. Or more than likely, you're going to know that arpeggio shape. A lot of people learn that as like one of the first sweeping arpeggios they learn because of how it lines out. Anyway, he's going to take that. Now he's going to go to B and play the same thing. Same shape, just move it up two frets. So he's playing a B minor, oh, not a B minor 7, just a B minor arpeggio. And um, then he's going to go to a C major arpeggio. If you've ever that shape, but we're only playing the three middle strings, and then you move that same thing up to a D major triad. So, and then he's going to switch things up because he's just played um, triads, and he's gone right up the chord scale. So. There's no, it's not ambiguous at all, we're in A Dorian. Because that's what all these notes add up to. Then, instead of landing on a regular, you know, your garden variety, A minor 7th, he's going to land on this, which is a sus chord. So he's gone, which, so a sus chord has, the, has no... Uh, major or minor third. So you don't know if it's major or minor. And after the root note, the third is the most important note. Um, it helps distinguish tonality in a lot of ways. But with a suspended chord, it's suspended. It's up in the air whether it's major or minor. So, he, so it's a very ambiguous tonality. If you just play that, you can play, there's, you're open to a whole bunch of things you can do and your ears open. Um, and here's that as an open sound. What's cool is he's just played a very, like I said, it's just screamed that, hey, we're in a Dorian, and then he lands on this sus chord. So it's a nice, back to that mixture of, um, of how, you, how you shake up and how you mix up uh, your harmony. But anyway, like I said, that's uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel. He's an awesome player. Uh, you should definitely check him out. But until next week, thanks.